Are you hosting a holiday party? Looking for an easy but impressive way to feed your family after an epic cookie baking session, or craving a festive snack for your Christmas movie marathon? A Christmas charcuterie board is the perfect centerpiece in every case. Rockstar Games is known for creating sprawling worlds in its games, each of which are filled with small details for players to discover as they play. Putting it together is less complicated than it looks, and any excuse to feast on assorted meats and cheeses with all the accompaniments is a good one. Striking the ideal balance of flavors and textures is easy once you know a few pro tips. Making it into a holly jolly Christmas charcuterie board is mostly a simple matter of prioritizing color and seasonal produce. The idea is totally scalable for any size gathering too, even if it's just a charcuterie plate for Santa, aka, you. This has the effect of adding a feeling of immersion and making these worlds feel alive. Depending on how big and elaborate you want to get with your spread, you may need more than one actual board, platter, or plate. If you arrange them close together, they still work as a unified smorgasbord. A couple of other options are to arrange a Christmas charcuterie tree or a Christmas charcuterie wreath. Thanks to this impressive attention to detail, even Rockstar's older titles often hold up to modern standards. Whether you're down the streets of Los Santos, exploring the plain surrounding Armadillo, or sneaking through the alleys of Carker City, each place have their own distinct feeling and tone. Because of the sheer amount of detail found in every setting, players have been inspired to inspect each area as closely as possible to hidden Easter eggs and secrets left behind by the developers. Both look amazing even if you use a smaller variety of cheese, meat, and garnishes, and they're far easier than a structurally sound charcuterie chalet. No matter how large, or small, you're going, just make sure to grab these must-have items for your Christmas charcuterie board and things are guaranteed to be merry and bright. For instance, Grand Theft Auto 5 Inches has been out for over 8 years and players are still toiling to try and unravel the mysteries of Mount Kiliad. And delicious, of course. Hard cheeses while the word charcuterie refers to meat alone. No modern charcuterie board is complete without at least a few good kinds of cheese. This type of dedication is fueled by Rockstar's long history of including very well-hidden secrets. Generally speaking, you'll want between 2 and 5 ounces of cheese per person. Lean toward the higher end of that range if the charcuterie board is intended to be the main event, and you should assemble a few different types that represent multiple textures as well as tastes. In the hard cheese category, cooking with cocktail rings shares the sage advice to serve at least one cheese that people are familiar with, so even picky eaters can, and will, dive right in. Here are a few of the many surprises and connections that Rockstar managed to sneak right by players. Grand Theft Auto 3 The Hidden Sign The Hidden Sign in Grand Theft Auto 3 Inches is a notorious Easter egg that stands as a perfect example of Rockstar's penchant for placing hidden jokes and secrets in its games without any clues to point players in the right direction. Classic Parmesan or a firm cheddar both fit that bill. A rich, aged Gouda is another safe bet. The sign can be found in a parking lot in the Bedford Point district of Staunton Island. Other good options include nutty gruyere, salty manchego, and mild Colby cheese. If you start with large and thin enough slices of very firm cheese, you can use mini cookie cutters to create festive shapes like trees and stars, as food, pleasure and health adorably demonstrate. Even if you don't get that cute, it's a good idea to cut your hard cheeses into cubes or triangles before placing them on the board, and let them come to room temp so the texture and taste aren't dulled by the lingering chill of the fridge. Soft cheeses to balance out the hard cheeses, you'll want to pick one or two softer varieties too. Players visit this area during the Kingdom Come mission, but it can be accessed at any point during the game with just a car and some well-timed parkour. To get into the alleyway that holds the sign, players simply have to drive their vehicle up the stairs and park it at the very top. From atop the car, they can then jump into the adjacent alleyway that is filled with trees. As it happens, there are lots of soft cheeses that also look appropriately festive in green and red, like cranberry speckled Wensleydale, herb flecked Borson, marinated Bacconcini, as spotted on the toasty kitchen charcuterie plate, and goat cheese logs rolled in ruby red dried cranberries or green herbs. While not everyone is a fan of mild yet mushroomy brie, if you are, a Christmas brie is another fabulous touch. The hidden sign is on the other side of the alley, and it reads, you weren't supposed to be able to get here you know. This cheeky joke carried over to the PSP and PlayStation 2 versions of, Grand Theft Auto. 
Liberty City Stories, although it bears slightly different messages in those ports. Grand Theft Auto 3 Developer City Names, Grand Theft Auto 3 Inches contains a number of extremely well-hidden nearby towns named after developers of the title. Food stylist and blogger Meg Quinn's method for making one is to pop the soft cheese wheel in the freezer just until it's firm enough to push a cookie cutter cleanly through the middle. To find them, players have to get their hands on a dodo plane from the airport in Shoreside Vale. Fill the center shape with a brightly colored ingredient like pomegranate seeds, and use the cut-out portion of cheese to adorn another area of the board. From there, players can fly around the outer edge of Liberty City to eventually clip into an incomplete section of the map known to players as the Ghost Town. No one was ever supposed to see this area, but if the player keeps going, their radar will eventually show the secret town names. Gary's Town is named after 3D artist Gary McAdam, Chris's Town is named after designer Chris Rothwell, Adamton is a reference to 3D artist Adam Cochran and technical director Adam Fowler, Aaronsville is named for art director Aaron Garbett, Les County for producer Leslie Benzies, and Oberg refers to technical director Obi Vermey. Lastly, 3D artist Alistair Wood received an especially NSFW town name in his honor. While it's hard to find these names, these are fun nods to the hardworking team that helped make Grand Theft Auto 3 inches so special. Hunting them is also a fun activity for players who think they've seen everything the game has to offer. Grand Theft Auto. Vice City. Men with Concrete Shoes. Grand Theft Auto. Vice City. Follows Tommy Versetti as he navigates the tumultuous criminal network of Vice City. Along the way, he has to contend with biker gangs, the Ferelli crime family, and a handful of other troublemakers. Let it sit at room temp long enough to get runny again. Given how much influence the game takes from classic mob movies such as The Godfather and Scarface, it probably comes as no surprise that it would reference an infamous method of execution that has become synonymous with organized crime. Vice City hides more than one man who has had his feet encased in concrete before being thrown into the bay. These victims can be found in two different locations. Granted, things will get messier once people start cutting in, but it's an easy and effective flourish that makes your charcuterie plate instantly Instagram ready. Looks aside, other top contenders for the soft cheese portion of the proceedings include creamy blue cheese, which can be surprisingly sweet and mild if you're not a fan of sharp and pungent varieties, feta, and burrata. Sliced meats a charcuterie board without meat is just a fancy cheese plate, and there's nothing wrong with that. But for omnivores, the animal protein is an essential element, and the choices are astounding. The first is at Washington Beach, while the second is between Leaf Links and Downtown. But don't let the prospect of what kind of meats to put on a charcuterie board overwhelm you. Under the water in both locations, players can find a large man decomposing under the water with cinder blocks on his ankles to keep him down at the riverbed. As with your cheese selection, the key is to offer a few different types of textures and tastes. Soft slices of prosciutto or jamon nestle up nicely next to firmer cured sausages and both happily share space with chewy or salami, in slices and or nuggets. In both cases, the man is only wearing underwear. There is no clear answer as to who the individuals were or who was behind the killings, but the character of Ken Rosenberg mentions the Ferelli crime family possibly doing something similar to him. It's a safe bet that these men were victims of the Ferellis. Grand Theft Auto. Vice City. Hidden picture of Ronald Reagan Perhaps one of the most random and difficult to find rock star secrets is the hidden image of former President of the United States Ronald Reagan. To find the picture, players first have to acquire an RPG and then head to the weapon store Amu Nation in downtown Vice City. Once at the store, players need to climb atop the helmets on the counter and aim the weapon out into the street in front of the store. Then, players have to simply turn around and face the wall behind them. While some people like to provide a knife for everyone to slice their own, you'll save space on your board and make things easier by pre-cutting whole salamis and sausages into bite-sized pieces yourself. The camera will clip through said wall, revealing the hidden picture. To make it especially odd, the image of Reagan has been edited to show the president giving a thumbs up while holding a handgun. Behind him is an image of former president of the Soviet Union Mikhail Gorbachev, which has a target painted on it and multiple bullet holes. Ronald Reagan was the president during the time period in which Grand Theft Auto Vice City is set, but the Easter egg doesn't seem to have any greater meaning beyond that. 
and the fact that the developers probably thought it funny to hide the image for players to find. Midnight Club 2 The Middle Finger, Midnight Club 2, is a racing title developed by Rockstar Games that took players through the streets of Los Angeles, Paris, and Tokyo in a series of high-octane laps. The game was a big critical success for the company and is well known among racing fans for its innovative damage mechanics for vehicles, fantastic soundtrack, and solid stable of unique vehicles. In addition to texture, pay attention to flavor and aim for a mix of mild and salty with smokier and sharper notes. When it comes to how to arrange them on the board, Food 52 has some tips on styling charcuterie. Midnight Club 2 Inches also introduced motorcycles to the series which hid some secrets of their own from players. This gag can only be found while riding on a motorcycle and requires players to let their character sit still for nearly a full minute without touching any controls whatsoever. Those eye-catching meat roses and salami rivers are easier than you might think. After doing so, the player character will turn around and give the player the middle finger. This is not the only moment in Midnight Club 2 Inches that breaks the fourth wall but it is a pretty comical secret for idle players to stumble upon. Grand Theft Auto. San Andreas, Gantt Bridge similar to the Bedford Point parking lot in Grand Theft Auto 3, the massive Gantt Bridge in San Andreas, houses a secret sign for players to find. For smaller coins cut from pencil-thin salami, overlap them like shingles to save space and look fancy. Plan on roughly the same amount as cheese, between 2 and 5 ounces of meat per guest, you can squeak by on the lower end if you're serving other dishes too. Pate or terrine when it comes to soft meats. Many people's minds may automatically go to velvety cured ham or even deli slices, but often overlooked, and completely optional, pate or roulettes can be a great addition to a charcuterie board. You can make your own meat mousse, or buy a ready-made version. Players have to make their way to the top of the southern suspension tower using either a plane or a helicopter. Check the fancy cheese counters at stores like Whole Foods, or order online from places like Olympia Provisions, D'Artagnan, and Murray's Cheese. Once the players make their way to the top, they are greeted by a cheeky sign that reads, There are no Easter eggs up here. Go away. While the sign on the bridge is a pretty well-known secret, and many players have made the pilgrimage to find it, far fewer gamers have taken the time to find the secrets hidden in the Gantt Bridge Visitor Center. A parody of a real-world location near the Golden Gate Bridge, the Gantt Bridge Visitor Center is filled with displays containing facts about the bridge. One sign by a piece of cable reads, Ooh amazing. If you like spice, keep an eye out for the spreadable Italian, Induja 2, which happens to be deep red in hue. In the same family of preserved meat preparations, terrines tend to be firmer in texture but can also be a nice bridge between creamier cheeses and drier salamis. Plus, they can look especially festive for the occasion, like this homemade cranberry and pistachio pate from Foodie on board. Try making it in smaller silicone molds like the ones intended for baking and chocolate, making it easier to get daintier slices for your board. A creamy spread or dip when you're wondering what spreads to put on a charcuterie board, you're probably thinking along the lines of condiments, and those are certainly essential, but first, a word on dips. If you have a super runny, ultra creamy cheese already, and or a spreadable meat product, this is a less critical component, but it is undeniably lovely to provide some sort of especially luscious substance on your charcuterie board. Since this is Christmas, you get major bonus points for dips that are naturally tinted red or green. That's mind-blowing. Consider swirling cream cheese with pesto for a quick, herby dip. Make a cold spinach artichoke dip, easier to incorporate as opposed to one you need to serve warm or try a sun-dried tomato dip. Or, just go with what you love, like a classic caramelized onion dip or crowd-pleasing everything bagel dip and scatter some minced sun-dried tomatoes and fresh green herbs on top to garnish with a little holiday flair. Actually, no, it's simple physics and not really that impressive. Another sign explains actual technical details about the in-game model of the bridge, including that it is made up of 11 textures, is comprised of 15,000 polygons, and takes up a staggering 1.27 MB of disk space. These figures were later updated to reflect the comparative complexity of the next-gen remaster of GTA 3. Manhunt 2 Baby Alien Due to the realistic depictions of violence, the Manhunt games were divisive when they were released, with Manhunt 2 inches even being banned in the UK, per Destructoid. As with your cheeses, you should let your dip or spread come to room temperature so it's not too cold and stiff to slather or scoop. 
condiments to complement and provide piquant contrast to your meats and cheeses, you'll want to include at least one kind of condiment on your charcuterie board. This could be something that marries sweet, sharp, and savory flavors in one bite, like this mulled wine cranberry chutney from Sainsbury's, or a store-bought mostarda or pepper jelly. Or, you can put out tiny pots of mustard, something grainy is a good choice, and honey, even a chunk of golden honeycomb on a miniature plate. Use ramekins or your smallest bowls to hold these extras, and be sure to provide separate utensils for each one, preferably equally petite so they stay put and don't get in the way of other ingredients on the board. For honey, a wooden drizzle stick is a nice touch, but if using a piece of comb, a small cheese spreader knife is best. If you're not a big fan of honey, then fruit jams, jellies, and preserves are equally good partners for many types of meats and cheeses, and provide a similarly sweet counterpoint to sharp mustard with the added bonus of being less likely to drip all over the rest of the board. Crackers and carbs to provide a solid base for all the other elements you assemble, at least one or two bready items are de rigueur. The games allowed players to get up close and personal to their targets as they strangled, sliced, and shot NPCs in a deadly game of survival. The animations are all very detailed, so much so that the first game was referred to be critical hit as regarded as Rockstar's most violent and controversial game. The dark and gritty nature of the game made it all the more surprising when players stumbled on a silly Easter egg featuring a baby alien. Of course, aliens have made appearances in many of Rockstar's games, but Manhunt 2 inches mostly strays away from weirder sci-fi elements. The alien fetus can be found during the chapter titled, Origins. By following a series of hallways, away from where the game prompts players to go, players will find themselves in what appears to be a regular-looking lab. Regular looking, that is, until they take a closer look at a desk in one corner. Crackers are the classic choice and are always welcome, but very small rounds of toasted bread from a slim baguette are a nice touch too. On top of this desk is a huge jar that appears to contain chubby white alien baby. Grand Theft Auto 4 The Hidden Sultan RS The Sultan RS is one of the rarest and fastest cars in Grand Theft Auto 4, so naturally players are always on the lookout for one. Try to hit the same goal here of offering more than one taste and texture. For instance, pick at least two different types of cracker, like a buttery club cracker and a crunchier seeded variety. Those dark crackers studded with cranberries and pistachios that are often found above the cheese case, or at Trader Joe's, add a certain richness both visually and otherwise, but they can be too much for the texture averse. The Sultan RS can appear in traffic if the player is already driving one, and can even appear in one of Brucky's drag races but neither of those instances are very helpful in allowing the player to actually get their hands on one. In that case, a nice herb-flecked cracker still looks festive. The cheese professor got some expert recommendations for specific brands of store-bought crackers to seek out. If you want to go the extra mile, try making homemade crackers that can be shaped with mini cookie cutters into Christmas trees, candy canes, and snowflakes. Thankfully, the developers hid the car in a specific location in the game that only dedicated players would ever locate. To find the Sultan RS and take it for a drive, the player has to head to the northernmost point of Alderney. This cheddar cheese cracker recipe from Bakepedia will work wonderfully. Or, try easy Parmesan pesto twists, which Joe Cooks makes with store-bought puff pastry. Try half with basil pesto and half with sun-dried tomato pesto for Christmas colors. Fresh seasonal fruit fruit is another crucial component of a great charcuterie board, so choose wisely. Strawberries and raspberries might look cheerful, but are not likely to taste good in the winter. There, players will find a dirt path leading to a rundown mansion. Though the mansion appears to be abandoned, a quick trip around to the back of the mansion will reveal the Sultan RS nestled behind some dense bushes. It is wild to think that the developers would intentionally design such an incredible car, only to hide it in one secret spot but it does make getting the car feel a lot more special. L.A. Nore, defaced toast in the Black Caesar, and the console's car, cases of L.A. Luckily, many flavorful, in season fruits do still bring colorful touches to the table. Seek out a few different types of ripe apples and pears. If you're lucky enough to find a variety of red-fleshed apple, like Lucy Glow, sweet yet tart, with a berry-like flavor and naturally pinkish red flesh inside, definitely snap some up, but don't sweat it if not. Nore, players can find a very curious slice of toast that bears a resemblance to a character from another one of Rockstar's games, Red Dead Redemption. These slices of toast can be found on cutting boards in the apartments that the player investigates. Red grapes are another perfect charcuterie board fruit, and still tend to be bursting with flavor post-fall. Ditto pomegranates, 
though they're nigh impossible to actually eat unless you remove the seeds ahead of time and serve them in a small bowl on the board. To instantly elevate your board, make a batch of sugared cranberries like blog number 2 pencil suggests. Although the images burnt into the toast or upside down, they pretty clearly depict a bearded male wearing a cowboy hat. The exact identity of the cowboy hasn't been confirmed by the developers, but fans think that it looks most like John or Jack Marston. This is not the only nod to the Western game, however, as what appears to be John Marston's iconic cowboy hat can also be found in a trash can during the case, the silk stocking murder. It's pretty easy for players to just walk right by these small nods without paying any special attention to slices of toast or an everyday trash can. Max Payne 3 Pianos As players progress through, Max Payne 3, they come cross paths with four pianos in chapters 1, 8, 11, and 13. Many players have discovered that they can have Max play the piano if they approach it, but few have done this enough times to discover the true secret of these instruments. These shimmering tidbits are still quite tart, but with enough sweetness to make them palatable, and are a great match for many creamy cheeses and savory meats. Though they don't conform to a red, white and green theme, melting soft, honey-sweet persimmons are another underrated option. As for what not to put on your charcuterie board, citrus can be tricky. As Cup of Zest points out, its inherent acidity makes it difficult to pair with many cheeses. While blood orange wheels might look amazing among all the other ingredients, they'll clash in flavor, and taste is the most important factor here. Seasonal dried fruit while fresh fruit adds all important juiciness, sweet tart notes, and a range of crisp, soft, and tender textures, don't forget about dried fruit for filling out your charcuterie board, literally, in some cases. Smaller dried fruits in particular can be useful for physically filling in gaps on the board between other ingredients, but they're not just for show. Dried cranberries and cherries are pleasantly chewy and tart, as are slightly stickier and sweeter golden raisins. The first time that Max plays the piano, he does so with a lot of uncertainty, struggling to remember a particular tune. However, if the player continues to have Max play the subsequent pianos, his performance gradually improves. By the time the final piano is reached, Max has remembered the tune in its entirety and plays it smoothly. If you find flame raisins, their deep reddish shade is especially nice for a color-coordinated board. Dedicated fans of the series may recognize the final tune as well, as it is revealed to be the theme from the very first, Max Payne, title. Dried figs bring a subtle, seedy crunch. Shatteringly crisp apple and pear chips can even act as sweet stand-ins for crackers as people build their bites. Dixia Botteri of food, pleasure, and health likes to stuff dates with goat cheese and pumpkin seeds for a multi-textured punch of sweet salty flavors all in one bite on her board. When deciding on which dried fruit to add, if there's anything you're unlikely to finish up in other applications, take the advice of Fav Family Recipes and buy small quantities from your store's bulk bins instead of an entire pre-packed box or bag. Roasted nuts as long as none of your nibblers are allergic. Nuts are a must-add element for your charcuterie board. This is a relatively small secret for players to track down, but it's ultimately quite the fun payoff for the series' biggest fans. Midnight Club, Grand Theft Auto, and Red Dead Redemption. Sam Hauser Rockstar Games was founded in 1998 by Dan and Sam Hauser, two brothers who would go on to produce and write for Rockstar's biggest titles, including the Grand Theft Auto series and Bully. Not only that, but Sam, interestingly, has made sly appearances in a fair number of the studio's games. The first of these was in Grand Theft Auto 3, where Sam Hauser appeared as a clerk in the Amu Nation store, a role that he would reprise in Grand Theft Auto, Vice City. Sam Hauser's next appearance came a few years later in Rockstar's Midnight Club, Street Racing. However, this appearance can be a bit harder for players to spot. He is only featured on posters for a fictional movie titled, Say Sorry, Be Nice. Curious players can find these posters in the game's virtual rendition of Times Square. Finally, the character of Sam Odessa in Red Dead Redemption appears to be modeled after Sam Hauser appearance. In the main game, players interact with the character multiple times for a line of quests, and this same character model also appears as a corpse in the game's Undead Nightmare DLC. Almost any kind will work, but don't give guests a raw deal. Roasted or toasted nuts will be much crunchier and tastier, and you can buy almost any variety already prepared, plain or seasoned. Spiced almonds provide a rich crunch and festive, herby flavor, but you can easily make your own roasted nuts at home, too. If you don't like pepper, pick another herb such as rosemary, but if it's a more delicate one, 
Mince it and add it only after the nuts are roasted and cooled. Shelled pistachios are a nice, naturally green option that taste as good as they look, and cinnamon sugar pecans bring that warmly spiced holiday flavor almost everyone loves, while still melding well with many other items on the board. If you're looking for a nut on the sweeter side, candied pecans are a wonderful option and can be made in less than an hour. Pickles Some people like to include fresh vegetables on their charcuterie board, while others think all lightly blanched and raw veggies should stay in their lane, i.e. on a crudite platter. Most can agree, however, that something pickled is a perfect addition to any meat and cheese plate. You can add whatever pickled vegetables you prefer, but if you can find them, bright red pepidus not only look amazing but taste incredible, sweet, sharp, and spicy all at once. Some stores stock jars of them with the other pickles, and some cheese counters sell them, either stuffed with parmesan or plain. Pickled cherry peppers make a fine alternative, though they don't taste quite the same, Cooks Illustrated says you'll miss out on a certain sweet complexity. If you're going green, don't limit yourself to the usual pickled cucumbers, zucchini, or even green beans and artichoke hearts. These sweet pickled grapes with white wine vinegar and cinnamon are a delightfully unexpected addition that's also super easy to make. You can choose red or green grapes, but plan on giving them at least two days to marinate in the fridge before you serve them. Olives similar to but certainly distinct from pickles, olives are also a stalwart charcuterie board member. Obviously, any green olive variety makes the most appropriately colored option. Classic pimento stuffed olives bring a pop of red as well, but if you think they're too boring, go for marinated green olives that feature specks of red pepper and other flavorful ingredients. Those pack your own olive bars are a prime place to find sophisticated blends that look and taste amazing, but if you don't have any luck, Making marinated olives at home is really easy. This fork in the kitchen recipe marries briny Kalamata olives and milder Castelvetrano olives with rosemary, oregano, thyme, bay leaf, garlic, lemon zest, and red pepper flakes. Any type of plain olive you buy will taste amazing given the same treatment, and you can play around with the specific combination of herbs and spices, but in any case, use an olive oil that tastes great on its own to ensure the best flavor in the finished dish. Also, allowing at least a week for the flavors to meld is best, so plan accordingly, but 24 to 48 hours will be enough in a pinch. Festive garnishes once you've chosen your components, all that's left to do is arrange them. If that seems like the most daunting part, there are plenty of online tutorials and tips. Blog Mom on Timeout suggests paying attention to color and texture when deciding where to put each element and separating similar ones with contrasting ingredients. Other tips include placing your small bowls down first, as they are great to lean crackers against, pile dried fruit next to, stack cheese by, etc. And adding fresh herbs as a finishing touch. Seriously, don't forget the garnishes. For a Christmas charcuterie board, fresh rosemary is probably your best friend. It looks like pine needles, smells fantastic, and handily fills in any gaps in your board, or frames it nicely around the edges. While you won't be picking it up to nibble, Every time someone brushes it, it sends up a wonderful fragrance that adds to the experience, and it's a sturdy herb, so once your board is barren, wash off the sprigs and save them to cook with later. Fresh thyme and fresh bay leaves also work well, but any woody or fluffy herbs are fair game. Pomegranate is another favorite charcuterie board garnish. Broken open pomegranate halves do look beautiful, but they can't be easily eaten. A better option may be to scatter individual seeds in strategic places, like Lexi's Clean Kitchen, or position clusters of arils you've already separated from the shell and pith like Damn Delicious did for a holiday cheese board. Chocolate sweet elements in the form of fruit and honey are good ideas in any charcuterie spread, but whether you should put chocolate on a charcuterie board depends on all the rest of the ingredients you've assembled. In many cases, chocolate may clash with several other components. Conversely, it can harmonize surprisingly well with unlikely partners like prosciutto. If you have room on your board and want to include it, dark chocolate is the best bet as it's more complex and less sugary than milk chocolate, but it's entirely up to you. As cheese and chocolate tend to be easier to pair, if you have OVO lacto vegetarians in attendance, a meat-free chocolate and cheese board can be an especially great option. Side note. A chocolate salami would be a perfect option here. Ditching the meat does mean it will no longer technically be charcuterie, but it's your party, and you can break the rules if you want to. While we're on the subject of stretching definitions, and chocolate, too, 
it's also worth checking out the many so-called Christmas charcuterie boards that skew entirely sweet with cookies, candy canes, and other holiday treats. Small spreaders obviously, most of what ends up on your charcuterie board will be edible, but one non-food item that makes a huge difference is the humble cheese spreader. This small, rounded knife is the perfect size for serving creamy cheeses that don't have enough structural integrity to be picked up on their own, as well as any and all condiments, dips, and spreads joining the party. For looser things like honey and preserves, very small spoons are also handy. Full-size butter knives and other utensils will work in a pinch, but their length makes them more unwieldy and prone to falling out of place, and getting in the way of other elements. If you plan on making Christmas charcuterie an annual tradition, it's worth investing in a set of small spreaders topped with wreaths and the like. Or consider a less figurative approach, like this cheeky little set of spreaders from Etsy. Their inscribed messages to spread love, joy, peace, and hope are certainly seasonally appropriate, but fit to use all year round as well. Now armed with the knowledge of everything you need for the best Christmas charcuterie plate, you'll have no trouble pulling it off, and probably no trouble polishing it off either. If you find bits and pieces remain, however, check out these leftover charcuterie board ideas in case you get tired of simply snacking.